Welcome to the review of ISDT D2, a dual channel AC charger. Please note that the product I'm reviewing is a test sample. This means that there still can be some changes in the firmware, hopefully improvements, before the final product is released to the market. Even though I haven't found anything wrong with the charger, I decided to split the review into two parts. In this one, I will introduce the charger, show its features and user interface, and give you my initial impressions. The second part will include performance tests and my final thoughts. Having this out of the way, let's crack on with the review. ISDT has already established themselves as a manufacturer of high-quality charging and battery-related products. Just to mention their line of DC chargers covering different power output requirements. All their products are quite unique and stand out on the market. Apart from original designs, great attention to details and high quality, their charger's distinct feature is the user interface, which makes navigating through the menus much easier than on many similar products on the market. ISDT D2 follows this trend, meaning it also features the same excellent interface and comes with the same lovely 2.4 inch color screen, which makes it so much nicer to use than typical two-line display chargers. However, it also introduces two features that has not been seen on ISDT chargers yet, namely dual channel design and AC power input. Packaging and box content are as minimalistic as pretty much all ISDT products. There are no unnecessary items included. The charger only comes with a power lead in the box. The user manual can be downloaded from the link in the description. Please note it is very basic and is more of a product information card than a proper user manual. Well, there's really no need for one as the operation is rather straightforward as will be demonstrated in a moment. Let's have a look at the charger. On the top panel we have the screen, channel selection buttons and the dial knob used to navigate the menus. It's a very simple and clean design. There is nothing on the right hand side. There is a USB charging port. It is just for charging, not for PC connectivity. And the firmware update port on the left hand side. At the back we can see two vents covering two fans, one for each channel, and also AC input socket. There is nothing really interesting at the bottom apart from a few more vents. And on the front there are two battery outputs with XT60 connectors and two balance ports. As with other ISDT products the balance ports have a slightly wider tooth and a minus sign on the side where the balance plug needs to be connected to. The build quality is on pair with other ISDT products. For those unfamiliar, it's excellent really. The charger is made of plastic but not cheap one. Everything is well put together, uh, there are no gaps, no material flexing, when putting pressure and the charger has some heft to it which is always a plus in my books when it comes to power supplies. Please remember that this one has a power supply built in. The only very slight flex is around the screen here but that's me being super picky and I'm sure you won't notice this in normal operation. The control knob select action of this one which is pressing in offers a firm click but doesn't require putting too much pressure. I actually prefer this kind of dial than the one used on SC620 which requires a push from a side. The SC620 dial is not bad but this one feels more natural to me. As you probably have noticed there is no DC input on this charger and it can only be powered from the mains so that means not taking it to the field. I guess ISDT decided that the target customers will not be using such a charger in the field as it's a bit on the heavy side compared to other DC only chargers from their catalogue. I do understand the logic behind that 
but I still would like to see a DC input here, considering the price point, plus I like versatility. Definitely a slight oversight, especially considering the competition offers such a feature on similar products. Finished with the boring stuff, let's have a look at arguably the second best aspect of ISDT chargers, the other one being build quality, which is the user interface. It seems like talking about this is quite redundant, as using the charger is so straightforward that the basic operation can be mastered after spending a few minutes with the charger, and doesn't even require a user manual for that. However, I feel it may help those interested and unfamiliar with ISDT products to see what the fuss is all about when it comes to the user interface. First of all, as mentioned already, it has a proper 2.4 inch color display which looks great and is an absolute pleasure to use. It actually looks nicer and more saturated in real life than in the video. Believe me, once you try it, you wouldn't want to go back to your old charger. The dial knob is used to move through the menus and pressing it selects an item. The long press from pretty much anywhere in the menus activates the main settings menu which looks like that. Most of the menu items are self-explanatory. There are following options available for each item that allows some level of customization. So for example backlight you can select from low middle and high. The same for volume, it's either off, low, middle or high. Completion tone, single or repeat. Display two channels, it's either yes or no. It's language selection, firmware sharing, system information and system self-checking don't offer any extra options and do exactly what the name suggests. I have never used the firmware sharing option so I cannot comment how well it is implemented, but I have seen reports on the forums that it works really good. The display two channels option may be worth explaining though. Selecting yes makes the charger default back to display split screen for both channels after 10 seconds of idling. Selecting no means exactly the opposite and that means that this needs to be done manually every time a user wants to see split screen. As we can see there are quite a few customization options here and to go back to the main menu we simply select back and short press the knob. After the charger is plugged in we are welcomed with the screen split in two, one side for each channel. The NC display here means not connected and that shows when there's nothing connected to a channel. When a battery is plugged in, there's information regarding total voltage, number of cells and range of voltages for the individual cell. To see more information regarding each battery or each channel, simply select the channel using the corresponding button and to go back to the split screen, we press the same button again. To go straight from channel 1 to channel 2, we can just press channel 2. Again, going back to the split screen, it's as simple as pressing the button. Also, just to mention that user interface and interactions are the same for both channels. Hence, I will be only focusing on one of them in this section. The channel number is displayed in the right hand side corner. On the first screen, there's information regarding total voltage, number of cells and additionally each cell voltage. If we scroll down we get access to some extra details including number of daily full charges and total number of full charges which is pretty much useless information if you ask me. There is also the internal temperature info available which is actually useful. These two numbers here show zero at the moment because they are only being used when an actual task is performed. A task being charging, discharging or storing. To actually perform a task, what we have to do, we have to select a channel by pressing a channel button. And after that we have to short press the dial to go into task menu. Again, most of the menu items are self-explanatory. 
and there are following options available in the submenus. So first we can select the task, which is, as I said, charge, discharge or storage. Then we have a battery type, and we can select different batteries here. Cell voltage, which allows us to override the final voltage. Cell count. Current setting. And then start task option. A very interesting feature here is the possibility to override the final voltage in the cell voltage menu. For example, in case of LiPo batteries, it allows us to go from 415 to 425. The range changes here depending on the battery type we select from the menu. So for high voltage LiPos, we'll have a range from 430 volts to 440. That's a very nice feature actually. Also, the cell count can be changed here manually. This is normally selected automatically by the charger just after plugging in a battery. However, sometimes it needs overriding, especially when we use a single cell after using a multi-cell battery. After setting all the parameters here, we simply select start task and confirm by pressing the dial. Each task has a different color. Orange for charging, purple for storage and pink for discharging. So you always know what is going on just by glimpsing at the screen. When charging process starts, on the top of each screen there is a charging current available and total number of milliamps put into a battery. In the left top corner there is a total charging time visible. First screen also shows each cell voltage. On the second screen we can see the internal resistance of each cell and on the third screen we have internal temperature of the channel circuit, the total voltage and power which is really useful and again the daily and total number of completed charges. The screens look similar when discharging or storing. The only difference is the color as mentioned earlier and lack of cell resistance information. So this is discharging and this is storage. Also the figure on top of the screen shows the number of milliamps drawn from a battery not put into obviously. At the end of charging process first there is a green screen saying fast charge done which after a few moments changes to a blue one with the information charge done. This is similar to other chargers and I still haven't figured out why there is double information shown like that. Initially I thought the charger was set up to fast charge a battery first and if it wasn't interrupted it would carry on with the normal charging and balancing. I don't think that's the case though as it has never taken long to go from the green screen to the blue one and the charger doesn't seem to be doing much before the second screen is shown. It's obviously possible to charge one as batteries using the charger. To do so we have to plug in the battery direct directly to the XT60 output. At the moment I'm using my mega parallel harness which allows me to charge 11 batteries at the same time. So you plug in a battery, voltage 4, select the channel, charge LiPo 420. As you can see we have to change the cell count here and current setting let's do when charging one as batteries there is a message prompting whether we want to perform unbalanced task. Have to select yes and off we go. And this is the only information available when charging one as batteries. As this can be important to some users, it is possible to charge multiple cell batteries without a balance connector. 
Again, before doing so, we will be asked if you want to perform unbalanced task. Okay, charge, forest. Confirm. As simple as that. Such charging is clearly not recommended. However, there are some batteries on the market that do not come with a balance connector. From what I recall, some FPV goggles use those. Many chargers on the market won't allow to charge such cells, so it's nice there is an option here. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this part. If you are interested in some performance tests, please stay tuned for the part 2. I can already say that it looks like ISDT has managed to design another good product. Even though I have been using a test sample, the charger performed very well. I have already done some testing, and if you are interested in those, please visit my thread at RC Group's forums. Just to say that the ISDT D2 didn't have any problems providing 200 watts output, both on a single channel and combined. If you are in the market for a multi channel AC charger, ISDT has it covered now. True, it is not the cheapest product on the market but in exchange it offers all the features you can expect from ISDT. Namely, excellent quality, original design and fantastic user interface with intuitive menus. On top of that, after my initial testing, it looks like it also offers solid performance, which is pretty much the most important aspect of any charger. Hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching.